In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a mean reversion trading strategy which works on the daily chart of dollar yen and uses no indicators whatsoever. It's been performing very well over the last 13 years and the equity curve looks something like this. I actually discovered this strategy kind of by accident and it worked so well that I thought I'd develop it a little bit further and share with you guys. I was playing around with this piece of test code that I use and I was so surprised at how well it worked on the daily chart of dollar yen. I use this simple piece of code that I created that allows me to buy X bars or short X bars and X bars in this case being 20 daily bars and we're looking at a, so a 20 day high and a 20 day low and this piece of code allows me to either do one of two either trade in the direction of the trend so if there's a 20 day high then it allows me to buy and go long or it does the opposite it allows me to actually short sell when there's a 20 day high so and that's what we're going to look at in this trading strategy as soon as those prices are overstretched to the upside we're going to look at doing the opposite and trading it back towards the mean and of course do the inverse of that so when we're breaking through 20 day lows we're looking to buy the market and trade upwards back towards the mean we're going to look at the basic strategy then look at the best time to enter the trade then we're going to introduce a stop loss and we're going to look at a timed exit so we're going to look at possibly staying in the trade just for two days or six days ten days we're going to test that so let me quickly demonstrate the rules over on the whiteboard, then we move over to the computer, look at the strategy in depth, look at the developments, improvements, and see what the results are. This strategy is a stop and reverse type strategy. That means that an exit from a long position is actually an entry to a short position. So we're always in the market unless we get stopped out for a loss or we exit using our timed exit after three days, for example. So we aren't strictly trading back towards the mean. Let's say the prices go up and they break through 20 day highs, then we sell short and normally when we get back towards the mean price, then we exit. But in this case, because we're looking at short selling as well, we actually leave the trade running until the trades are making 20 day new lows and then to exit from our short position and then we buy and enter a long position. So we're kind of always in the market, stop and reverse. To demonstrate quickly on the whiteboard, I've drawn a few bars. So typically, this bar here with a little blue dot is the highest high over the last 20 days. So every bar, or every day, we're looking at the high and we look back 20 bars. I've only got five bars showing here, but we look back over the 20 bars. If the high has come above, the highest high over those 20 bars, then that's our signal to short sell. As soon as the daily bar is closed, we literally enter short on the open of the next bar. That's the basic strategy. We're going to test the time at which we enter and other things like I've already mentioned. And of course the opposite is for short trades. If we see a break of the 20 day lows, then on the open of the next bar, we, we go long and we buy. So now that's the rules, let's go over to the computer, see what the trades look like on the charts and look at the improvements and all of the results. Looking at this first chart, this is the daily chart of dollar yen or 1440 minute chart, it's the same thing. And this is the standard strategy before we've made any modifications. So what we're looking for is there's a buy here now. This bar just before it would have been the 20 day low, the lowest low here of the past 20 bars. And so we bought on the open of the next bar. Now normally, a normal mean reversion strategies, we actually exit around about the mean. Now I've used a 20 period moving average for the mean, which is kind of a standard one, a bit like the center line in Bollinger Bands. But with this strategy, because we're going long and short, we're not going to exit the long trade at the mean. We're going to stay in the trade until we hit a new 20 day high, which is here. And then we exit the long position and then we enter a new short position. And then we don't exit this short position unless we've hit a stop loss or if we get a new 20 day new low. And you can see as of yet, we haven't got the 20 day new low. 
so we're still in the trade. In this next workspace is exactly the same strategy. I've actually reprogrammed it, so you'll notice that we're looking at a 15 minute chart here. It's the same strategy. I've had to use the 15 minute chart just so that I could pinpoint at different entry times for the trades. You remember on, on the first one, all we're doing, as soon as we see that 20 day low, we buy on the opening bar. And the opening bar, because of the Forex session, is 1700. Now, 1700, we've seen in previous videos that we can have wider spreads than normal with Forex markets. But typically, the spreads tend to get smaller, become narrower uh, within the first hour to 90 minutes. So what I wanted to check in this next chart, I wanted the same strategy, but rather than entering immediately after the close of that daily new high or new low, I wanted to wait 90 minutes and enter at 18.30 Eastern Standard Time. And it doesn't make a lot of difference to the equity curve. So let's have a look at that equity curve. And that's the equity curve showing trades from 2008 through to the end of 2019. So we're just looking at some in-sample data. So that leaves us all of 2020 and half of 2021 to look at some out-of-sample or untouched data once we've done those modifications, just to see if those modifications have continued to work on that unseen data. It's just the way I like to do things. I think it gives us a better idea of whether what we've done is likely to make money in the future in true unseen future data. So that's entering and exiting the trades at 18.30, but perhaps there's a better time. So I decided to test this. So in this next workspace, I run an optimization and we can see, I've called it my trade time, the, the input. And currently we're entering at 18.30. I haven't actually got 18.30 on this because I've gone in increments of one hour or steps of one hour. So it's anywhere between 1800 and 1900. They're both very, very similar results anyway. But is there a better one? And looking at the net profit and the average trade, so net profit, average trade, looking down these, yes, there is a better one. And it's a stable area. We start to hit 5 million around here, get up to 6.2 million here, and it stays around 5 million. So this is quite a nice, stable central area. Got a very good average trade of 59,000, almost 60,000. And that's at 11 o'clock in the morning. So that's what we're gonna use now. Let's use 11 o'clock in the morning rather than 18.30. So to clarify, once we've got that daily bar closed with a high that's the highest over the last 20 bars or a low that's the lowest over the last 20 bars, then instead of immediately entering the trade at market, we actually wait till 11 o'clock the next morning, so the next day to enter this trade. And here's the equity curve, which doesn't look too much different to what entering at 18.30 does it. But we have seen from the total net profit and the average trade value that this is a better time to be entering. So I'm happy to stick with that for now. The next thing to look at is a stop loss. I like to use stop losses and I do typically like to use fixed pip stop losses. So let's do an optimization or I've already done an optimization. So let's have a look at the results. And here's the stop loss. I've tested it from zero, which we've already seen. Uh, this is our 6.2 million net profit. 59,000 average trade, right the way through to 400 pips. Actually says four, but that is equivalent to 400 pips. And looking through these, net profit is best at 20 pips, but we're not gonna use that. That's in fact far too close. I'd like to see something a little bit wider to give us a bit more room. Looking down the net profits, they're all well in the six millions, right up until about 240 pips, then they start to tail off a little bit. So looking at the average trade, we at 20 pips, we've only got 13,000. Tends to increase, increase, increase until we get to around about two, 2.4, which is 200, 240 pips. 200 pips has got a slightly better net profit than 240 and it's got a less max intraday drawdown of 1.9 million compared to 2.3 million. And in fact, it's got 
a less intraday drawdown than using no stop loss at all, although it has drastically reduced the size of the average trade. But nevertheless, we do need to use a stop loss. So I'm going to stick with using 200 pips as the stop loss. Here's the equity curve, which does look slightly better, slightly better in the early years, slightly smoother. We've reduced the average trade, but it's still large enough to trade even after we've paid for things like spreads and commissions, slippage. So we're happy with that. And it's given us some sort of an idea of where our risk is going to be within the trade. We know that we've been making slightly more net profit, less average trade value at only 34000 now. But our largest loser is capped at our stop loss area. So we know where the maximum risk is likely to be there or thereabouts. And the next thing I want to look at is that timed exit. I've used this timed exit in previous studies. And what we're saying is once we're in, we're in a trade, if we exit after two days, six days, ten days, is that quite a good exit to use rather than waiting for a reversal signal? So I've done an optimization on that, so let's have a look. And I've called it timed exit, and one is literally one day or sort of 24 hours later. Zero is what we've already got, with no timed exit. Remember our net profit, 6.7, the average trade, 34,000. Looking down the results up to a maximum of 20 days, which I've tested. The highest net profit is 18 days. Our average trade is a little bit less. But if we look next to it, 19 days, only 4.6 million. So that's a little bit alarming. I like to see more of a stable area. In fact, I prefer to go with something like 16 or 17. But we're still making less net profit than using no timed exit at all. Our average trade is smaller. Our maximum intraday drawdown is a tiny bit smaller. But looking at the res results, overall, I don't really like what it's done for our strategy. So I'm actually going to stick with no timed exit whatsoever. So we're just looking at the stop and reverse or our stop loss as an exit. So we've only made a couple of minor adjustments so far. We've got our 200 pip stop loss and we've decided to enter and exit the trades at 1100 hours rather than immediately after the close of the daily bar at 1700. So the next thing left to do is look at that 18 months of out of sample data to see if the adjustments we've done have continued to perform, if the original strategy has continued to perform. It will give us some idea, give us some idea of how things are going to work out in the future in completely unseen data. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a favour and hit the thumbs up button now. Just before we go to that workspace, I'll just show you that the data that we've got here is right up until 31st of December 2019. In the next workspace, we've got data up until the 30th of June 2021. So a good 18 months out of sample or unseen data. So let's have a look at the performance report. We're making more money, that's good, because we're taking more trades and they've been profitable. The equity curve is, it's not the smoothest, but it's certainly making new highs look. Looking at the total trade analysis, the average trade is now slightly higher, which is great. That means the trades of that unseen 18 months of, have been of higher quality. Still got the same largest losing trade. We've not had any slippage on our stop loss yet. So overall, we are making new highs, which is great. So I'm quite happy with that result. We could look at developing this even further. We could look at some trend filters, you know, overall trend filters, to only taking the short trades on a overall longer term downtrend and vice versa. But I'm quite happy with the results of being consistent from such a simple strategy. I don't like to meddle too much if things work, especially as they've continued to work in the out of sample data. That's quite pleasing. To conclude this video and this strategy then, we found a quite a simple, easy to trade strategy that's shown consistent behavior over that 13 year period. Hopefully it will continue to perform into future data for years to come. While finding strategies with an edge 
isn't easy, it also doesn't have to be as complicated as you might think, as we've seen with this one, just using a 20-day high or 20-day low on a daily chart. Obviously, this is quite unique just to dollar-yen. You try the same strategy on other pairs and it will work horribly. All these markets and time frames, they do trade independently. They've all got their own behavior. So there is no one strategy, fits all, or in my opinion anyway. If you want to see more strategy ideas from me, check out some of my more recent videos. I've produced a lot of videos recently showing you different strategies using daily charts and intraday charts too. But until the next video, that's all for this one. This is Jared Goodwin, and thank you.